La Gracia's Grace from Bergmuller's Opus 100, 25 progressive pieces, is really great for learning forward wrist rolls. It's, it's incredible. And using the forward wrist rolls in, under the uh, overall legato that goes through it creates the sense of grace. And he goes through broken chords as well. Um, you'll notice that the C, the long notes are the C, F, and the A, and in between there are these little relentless bridges across that in 30-second notes. So what you get is, in terms of making it graceful and getting the legato, is this. A, forward, 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 That's a tricky one because you ha not only have to remember your forward wrist rolls, but you're using weight transfers, which are starting soft with lighter arms, getting a little bit more arm weight, and then the diminuendo. It's crescendo to a diminuendo. So if you start less, less, more, and, and less, least. You can play very slowly to get it too. basically what's going on there. Um, the left hand in the first half is very harmonic. It doesn't have a counter melody or anything. It's just a bed of harmony. So it's a half note. Dominant seven. So it's a lay on those half note chords to come in with a spongy, beautiful, romantic sound. They have to be underneath uh, the florid melody above with these 32nd notes. So the balance should be at the very beginning, you're already thinking toward the melody upstairs. So that's basically how I would practice that. Separate hands, I would do the forward wrist rolls or forward arm rolls, some people call them. Um, the crucial thing is not to lock your wrist. If you put the hands together slowly, you want to preserve your forward wrist rolls and really listen carefully to the beautiful unfurling of these figures with the 32nd note legato to the 8th notes and through broken chords really, leading to broken chords. So when I go slowly, I still want to capture the romantic lyrical poetry side of this, which would be... very horizontally so you don't get the sort of hiccup playing which could easily happen um, when you go from the eighth note into the 30 seconds it has to be so seamless. To control that in that slow tempo is very important so when you go quicker that you keep that the sort of stringing along of those beautiful uh, legato notes that they string along seamlessly I, I think that's a good explanation for it. Now in the next section we have the uh, we have the same figure that's in the treble that's put now in the bass. So we have this in slow-mo. Going into C major, by the way, which is the dominant key of F major. 
so this is this does have a staccato on it yes now has a melody going through chords. So now you have a balance of interest, at least sometimes, between the hands. Whereas in the first section, it was clear that the right hand had the interest where you did. Now you have the left hand coming in with those figures of the 32nd strung to the eighth, um, and the right hand having a melody upstairs and the chords on the top note. I did that purposely like that. He has a spike mark on that, on that F, which is looks like a little V there. And then just staccato here. Back to the beginning figure. What's that accent there? Okay, so now you understand how this is put together. Um, when you put the B section with the C major section, which eventually comes back to the F major, when you turn around to the da capo, um, you want to balance here. this is all threaded together. That's a good word, threaded together. And that's some, some of the things I would recommend um, when you're studying this. A wonderful piece for studying those very forward wrist rolls.